Hello, hello, this is Carl Sussman. Welcome back to Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Remember, if you've missed any part of this show, and this has been a good one, it's even had a few bad jokes in it, but if you want to get caught up, feel free to look online. You can get a copy of this show on any podcast app you like. You can find us on YouTube or just go to Google and search for Insurance Hour. You'll find us somewhere. We are definitely out there. I am proud to say that we are now heard by over 30 million people syndicated across California. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for listening. And as importantly, thank you so much for taking the time to want to learn and utilize properly your insurance policies. Before the break, we were talking about dogs, doggies to be specific, as an email was emailing in asking us uh, about being rejected for home insurance based on having a particular type of dog. So to to complete that discussion, Yes, currently an insurance company can refuse coverage based on the breed of dog you have. But as I mentioned, there are some potential options around that. If you missed it, just go back and listen to the show uh, a little earlier today. The next question says, can I have a $500,000 deductible? Will I save money? Okay, Uh, that's a good question. I don't know what particular type of policy we're talking about. I'm going to assume it's not a car policy. We're probably talking about a home policy, maybe even a business policy. Now, there's an aspect of diminishing returns, right? So, for example, if we had a $1,000 deductible and it costs X number of dollars, we would assume that if it's a $2,000 deductible, we would get a drop in the premium, $3,000, another drop. At some point, the insurance carrier, to keep that equal trend of lowering the premium by raising the deductible, they would get to a place where they are charging such a small premium for what the actual risk exposure is, they can no longer do it. So there is a point where you're going to reach a deductible where you're not going to see a premium change at all. You've basically reached the ceiling as far as how much the insurance carrier can statistically balance out the exposure of the risk for the deductible that you'd be responsible for. Depending on the risk and what that is, you might see that happen somewhere between five and $10,000. If you go higher than that, you might not see a significant or any drop in your premium for the most part. Again, we're talking generally. If it's a business policy, you may have more flexibility and you may be able to go higher. Another factor to keep in mind is how much risk do you have? If you're insuring something for a million dollars, then going from a thousand dollar deductible to 2000 means one thing. Going to a $50,000 deductible means another. What if we had a $10 million exposure? Now we could look at a $100,000 deductible. That's possible, right? So it's going to also be a factor of what you're insuring, how much you're insuring, and what that deductible ratio is going to be to the actual exposure that you have. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. If not, let me know. I will try to go through it again. Next question, it says, my home insurance company is one company and my auto has to be another because my kid's driving sucks. How can I still get a discount for this? Okay, this person is talking about putting your home and your auto insurance with the same insurance company to save money. We've talked about this before. Typically, when you have one insurance company, if you have more lines, we call it of insurance, it might be home, auto, whatever it might be, the more lines of insurance you have with one company, the better your rate. The reason for this is because statistically, right, again, it's not personal, it's it's just math, the more insurance policies you have with one company, the more likely you are to stay with that company, meaning they make more money over time, and for some reason, the less likely you are to file a claim. Can't explain that one, but the numbers show it to be true. So not only do most insurance companies give you a discount on the price you're paying for your home insurance, for example, they'll also reduce the price of your auto insurance. So both policies are actually getting a discount, not just one. So the question is, what can I do? Because their home insurance is with one company, but presumably that company does not want to write their auto insurance because of their son's driving record. My first question is, why did you not teach him to drive better? I mean, clearly, I'm just kidding. Uh, here's what you might be able to do. Some insurance carriers, and it's very, it's a small number even that I can think of sitting here right now, but there are insurance companies that will call, that will give you a discount on the property insurance portion if the auto insurance portion is what's called in-house. And what in-house means is that an agent or broker does have the auto insurance, it's just with another company. 
Meaning, let's say you had your policy and it's insured with Mercury Insurance, and that's where your home is. However, your auto insurance might be with another company. If that other company, the same insurance agent has control over, they've written both policies, then perhaps Mercury will give a discount on the homeowner's portion because they consider the agent having control. Versus if that client went and bought a policy through somewhere else and the agent has no control over it, that discount would not be available. Not suggesting that discount specifically does exist for Mercury. I just pulled them out of the, out of the air. But understand that there are some companies that will give you in-house discounts. Typically, it's an insurance company that writes property insurance and doesn't offer auto insurance, which makes sense, right? If they're going to be offering you a discount on something, they're probably only going to do it because they can't do it themselves. So if an insurance carrier insures your home, they don't write auto insurance, but you're able to, you, if the broker is able to say to them, okay, I insure the auto, it's just obviously not with you because you don't write auto insurance, sometimes they will give a discount on the home insurance for that. The auto insurance end, I've never seen them give a discount unless you have the property insurance with them, which is an interesting point as well because when we say home and auto discount or bundling or all these other great terms you hear, it's not just a homeowner's policy. Not everyone owns a home. It could be a condominium owner's policy. It could be a renter's policy, right? So I will holistically call it a property insurance policy, not necessarily a homeowner's insurance policy. I'm just, it's, it's a property policy and an auto policy. And those two will typically give you the ability to have a discount. All right, the next one. Why does my credit score make my auto insurance cheaper? Uh, this one, this is a toughie. Credit scores. Now, most states have what's called uh, credit scoring based on your credit basically. And what they'll do is they'll run a credit score. It's not a credit report, right? It's not going to show up as an inquiry. It's not going to lower your credit by having it checked. However, it does produce a number that the insurance company can look at. And that number, obviously, is going to impact, in this case, the person is talking about their auto insurance. So why is that? Again, we're back to math. Statistically speaking, people that have higher credit have less accidents and less claims, period. I know, it seems kind of crazy. We can speculate on why that is. Is it because they have higher credit so they have more money, so maybe they file less claims? Maybe. Is it that they have better credit, so that means they probably keep track of things better, so they're less likely to get involved in accidents or have claims? Maybe. You and I could debate this forever. All I can tell you is that numbers are numbers, and they are able to show in every state in the country, except for one, that the credit score directly correlates with the propensity to put in claims. Mic drop. It's just period, the end. So yes, that's why. We'll be back right after the break and we will go through some more listener emails. Back in a flash. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video.